Welcome back, everyone. We got our second and final match of the day. Another Soul team presents themselves. Soul Infernal in third place versus the undefeated, the untouched number one team, Guangzhou Charge. Unsullied as well. Like you said, Lemon, untouched. Not a single map dropped yet by the Guangzhou Charge. No one expected at the beginning of this season, the Guangzhou Charge would roll out as the saviors of APAC. And not even with many changes to their team either. Picking up Piggy towards the Nadir of their last year, which admittedly was... Uh, it looked okay towards the end of last year, but unfortunately the damage had already been done to their season. And we couldn't make it through to playoffs. However, now instead, having had time to generate that synergy, Guangzhou Charger looking like a well-oiled machine. And Jimmy and Choi So on looking like the two best DPS in APAC. Yeah, it's cool to see the Piggy hype after, you know, being that substitute from... On the Houston Outlaws to now writing MTD in the chat against Bellos Rhea. <laughs> like, that was a fun match. Um, Guancho Charge, also, their style doesn't rely as much on the double flanker as other teams. They much prefer the Tracer Hanzo and they flex to a lot of different compositions, especially on control. Soul Infernal on the other side, though, much more reliant on the double flanker. I've shown it a lot more. I would say their MN3 and Zest, one of the best. When it comes to Sombra Tracer, as MN3 splits his time on Hanzo with the occasional Cassidy. But let's take a look at the Soul Infernal hype video. I'm hyped, Lemon. I'm real hyped coming out of this into our starting lineup. There's no surprise to see if there aren't that many of them. MN3, Zest, Mag, Skewed, and Fixer. MN3 and Zest are where I want to immediately get out my microscope, my magnifying glass, and have a look at what they want to play because we went from two teams that hate the Sombra to a team that really does enjoy a little bit of that double flanker. Tracer and Sombra from MN3 and Zest. This is a roster that wants to surround you and crunch on in. But they're the ones that got crunched on their very first match of the season against the Soul Dynasty. Yeah. Losing to their sister team there. It was a game five, but it was a banger. But ever since then, it's been smooth sailing. 3-0s against the Shanghai Dragons. 3-0s against the Dallas Fuel. With the caveat that those are they were lower end teams at the time so where do we put the soul infernal i think this match will decide that how big of a fight can they put up against a team that has not dropped a game that is a tough challenge and a, and a tougher final boss yeah does fix have some moisturizing strips on just like me for real for real <laughs> I, I mean hey moisturized in his lane fix i believe has been playing a lot of brigitte recently Next up, we'll have to consider the Guangzhou Charge for the consideration of all of you out there who haven't picked up any APAC yet, who haven't watched. You've been missing out on the Jimmy Fornication session. It has been an <laughs> absolutely brutal showing from the sniper out In a good of way. China. In a good way. An absolutely good way. <laughs> Jimmy is Himmy, and that cannot be argued currently. Piggy's been such a great addition to this roster, really flexing away from that off-tank kind of role onto all manner of different tanks. We saw the MTD, what we mentioned earlier, against Bellos Rhea and the Ryan versus Ryan playing plenty of Winston 2. Iggy's been able to do it all and bring home the bacon. Jimmy is definitely winning in the staring contest, I gotta say. <laughs> um, this isn't a land match, but of course, the people in the WDG studios are welcome to stay there for the watch party. So Guangzhou Charge, we'll see. Will they drop a game? Because a Soul Infernal in, as the third seed are some stiff competition. And against the Soul Infernal's double flanker, we'll see how comfortable Jimmy will be on the Hanzo. Will he want to flex to another DPS that will be more survivable against you know, Assassins? Yeah, the Assassination Squad is definitely going to be looking for Jimmy so much of the time. It's going to be public enemy number one. The question is, 
can infernal get on top of him before the rest of guangzhou charge start to pick apart that backline fixer i'm really looking to be an excellent bodyguard to skewed here he's been playing a lot of anna fixer's break is going to be imperative for making sure that uh, skewed stays alive oh, i just watched the uh, infernal video that they posted of their little huzzah you know the team emote that you would see on the stage they did that in person that's great to see as we compare the stats between skewed and far away on the flex support man far away putting up a lot of damage and not sacrificing deaths in the process the back line we saw even in our last series how big of a difference that makes when it comes to the rush or really just the tank duel in general these are the people you depend on yeah far away is putting out the numbers and we saw in our previous match just how important that can be. MCD was absolutely pushing Helen out of the Baptiste. Ilios going to be our first map up here, Lemon. And this is where we expect Piggy to be able to flex his hero pool considerably. We're likely going to see some Diva and some Winston, depending on which of our submaps we roll over to first. But we don't really know anything about Soul Infernal on this map, so we're only left to speculate. And part of me wonders if MN3 is going to go back to his old haunt on the Ash that we've seen multiple times over in North America on uh, on Lighthouse, where we consistently see Ashes try and get on top of the Lighthouse and create a little uh, create a little camp up there from which to snipe down. <laughs> yeah, this was a, almost a map that Guangzhou Charge lost to the Hangzhou Spark went all the way to round three and ruins was the only round that they lost and man the dps were flexing all over the place i like that choice they want and jimmy can overlap on the tracers and mostly you're gonna see choice they want on there unless choice one wants to play the echo which is his niche pick that he likes on Ilios well especially but jimmy anything from ash hanzo tracer you name it he does it far away in xerneas sticking to the honor brig usually where they'll nano peggy most of the time unless choice they want gives them a good reason sometimes you nano the echo at least you see that a lot in north america no 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 chant this time <laughs> oh yeah i forgot there's no crowd <laughs> I, I, I was i was just, I was, I was gonna it. let it breathe a sec just in case we uh, we got a soul infernal chant but uh dynasty have definitely created a little bit of a uh, hegemony over the fans as guangjo chant's gonna roll out here with the echo choice they want it's a little bit of a pocket pick for him Possessed very much the same. MN3 maybe slightly less comfortable on the Tracer, but Jimmy also is going to be flexing over from that hit scan roll. I'm surprised if Zest wants to match this Echo. Not that I, no, I'm not a hater. I just think Sombras, so you can chase down that Echo, Hacker from the sky. It's an equal, it's a pretty good counter, but the duplicate, not as big of a win condition as it was before. EMP much more consistent. We have trading blows, anti's hitting soul dynasty, zest up in the air at half HP, finished off by Choice A1. And this is why you have to wonder. You go up against Choice A1 on one of his top picks. It's going to charge with the five versus four going punish mag in the process. Soul Dynasty, or sorry, Soul Inferno. I gotta get used to that. Overstaying their welcome. Oh, just moving the focusing beam between two low health targets. Unbearable DPS coming out from Choice A1. Remember here, Piggy can get on top of these supports a lot more easily than Mag can because Piggy won't be perturbed by something like a whip shot due to the constant momentum given over by the D.Va boosters, whereas Mag has to rely on a singular burst of momentum from the jump pack, which can easily be stymied by a well-timed whip shot. But conversely, Mag can do more to try and cut off Piggy from the supports using that shield to make sure Farway's line of sight can be somewhat occluded. You, despite Soul Infernal taking more damage, they didn't generate the nano much faster. That's just due to the burst that Guangzhou have. Nano available, which sometimes you can give this to the Brigida for the sustain if you think your backline is in trouble. Pulse, MN3 misses. Choice A1, Nano. We talked about this. Echo and the 3K4. Choice A1. Top DPS, as you mentioned, delivering the special. Yeah, he's like, there have been too many people talking about Jimmy recently. I need more Choice A1 chatter, they might say. A duplicate, ready to go. Zest, not even halfway just yet. Doubling the ult charge of the counterpart. I think that Zest uh, certainly is brave, as you said, to try and take Choice Air One in his own field. This is where Choice Air One's at his most comfortable, actually. Playing some of these projectile heroes. Choice Air One best known as a Genji and as a Echo. Ooh. Okay, pulls from Jimmy. And Choice Air One is lapping, or not lapping, but doubling Zest's ult charge in that case. The 4K helps. Of course, the primal from Mag. 
when you are down supports soul infernal thriving in the front with mn3 following up with mag and now being chased by jimmy 91 percent and growing for the charge is so infernal despite the few picks they got they fell back for reinforcements realizing they didn't have healing now fix this in the picture with rally they go and carve through the right side the infernal push charge against the wall as the rally is summoned from fix up mag leaves fix it out to dry but charge haven't realized this yet up above zest is nano doing his impression of choice there one who duplicates the auto for a second life a soul infernal on their last leg fighting tooth and nail a soul infernal just can't seem to take a fight but it is pretty close no matter what piggy will get nano whether it's from far away or from choice say one the support for the piglet is here an attempt to dodge for self-destruct using the duplicate yes it will give zest a little bit more hp to work with but still Guangzhou charge refused to give up this point they're still at 99 percent overtime I mean, Infernal are just staggering in, and it's two or three people left. Mag trying to hold on to space, but now his backline is exposed. Oh. Jimmy on the hunt, and Mag can't keep living. He hid for healing, and Soul just didn't keep that one going. Charge with 100-0. Yikes. Yep. I think I think that's uh, that's my point as well, Lemon. L little yikes. Uh, thus far, I do believe that Choice Air One is uh, is building up towards a deadlift. Look at this! Oh, beautiful! That, that's uh, that's the rare beam transfer. Of course, this was a 4K from Choice Air One. MN3 managed to escape and deny the ace at least. It's the little things, Lemon, that really keep you going in matches like this. Soul Infernal, of course, far from done. There's the MN3 Ash that I was uh, very excited to see. MN3, particularly adept on this hero. And we'll be trying to get up on top of the lighthouse. However, Ooh, Piggy's going to be on top of it. I'm, I'm really excited about this Mercy. How this is going to either enable MN3. Usually, you don't get away with Resurrects on such small maps. Especially with hyper mobile compositions with a Tracer and Diva. Piggy is taking some poke, but not at threatening levels. It's a Soul Infernal. Fixa. Damage boosting MN3, but also making sure Mag gets some love as he has to win that tank duel against Piggy. But Valkyrie, not as big of a win condition compared to a Nano, and now the rally that has been buffed. A Soul Infernal head back to the high ground. They are separated. Mag is towards the point with Zest. A Soul Infernal is getting dove on by the charge as Piggy pushing the supports off the high ground, unsuccessful at doing so, as the charge even wins the point battle with Mag and Zest losing that zest got picked off and the charger winning on all fronts mn3 needs to be doing significantly more here on the ash oh no this might be a, a poorly timed res but i do think mn3 is gonna be able to move away to safety but needs to be considerably outstripping jimmy in terms of effectiveness in these fights when you're getting that mercy pocket because xerneas is still effective in trying to take part in these tracer duels and helping to win the tank battle as well nano probably given over to piggy unless jimmy getting dove on that'll be the case piggy receives it finds skewed in a corner the peel is there for mag but not the matrix as piggy deals with two and charge are having a flawless ilios thus far absolutely flawless piggy maybe a little bit far out here but still has for self-destruct so not overly concerned might actually sacrifice themselves for choice here one but hey mn3 with two headshots now we're starting to see MN3 come alive. Soul Dynasty have five alts and momentum in their favor. Yeah, Charge went for staggers and got punished. Usually you don't want to fight in that tiny hallway. Charge may be looking for antis with the Ana, so maybe I, I don't hate the idea too much. But a critical sleep from Skewed turns this battle around for the Soul Infernal, who want to turn the point in their favor. But right around the corner is Piggy and Xerneas with the rally. The... Oh! Well, there's one explosion that'll take you out. If it's not the pulse, it's the self-destruct. Either way, Soul Infernal are not giving up this point. Now, the Valkyrie, who brought some members back into the equation, Zest is getting pocketed. Looking for the DMAC onto Piggy. As Charge can extend this to 99, it's the weight on the shoulders of Infernal who feel stressed enough to nano Zest to go for the clutch. Oh, Bob's not been able to be put onto point, though. Yes, he is slept, but he will continue contesting the point overtime now in favor of a Guangzhou charge, but barely anyone remains. And finally, Soul Inferno will get their first flip of the series, Lemon, but it was bloody expensive. 
all five ultimates were expended and now farway can take charge of this next fight a nano boost onto piggy it has been the go-to for guangzhou charge in so many of their previous matches decimating skewed the name of the game but fixer is also attempting target in midair if piggy can go for that midair interception fixer's getting away with a lot more resurrects than i than i usually see the guangzhou charge have, we've only seen kind of one point of aggression from them going to that hallway which costed them the fight the bob thrown down from mn3 the zest pulse misses not a lot of value from the soul infernal ult but fixa brings mn3 back into the picture while guangzhou charge were dealing with the bob piggy is slept but no problem for the charge a flawless helios 2-0 over the soul infernal oh absolutely brutalizing the soul infernal out of 20 out of 12 kills mn3 managed to get eight final blows but on the other side guangzhou charge the dps duo did so well 10 final blows for choice a1 six for jimmy and even though mn3 did manage to outstrip the damage done considerably doing 10k the next highest in the lobby being piggy at seven unfortunately the damage was so easily healed through by farway who felt fairly unpressured throughout that entire time a lot of zest uh time on the tracer it seemed was concentrated whilst trying to just contain choice a1 or even just make sure that piggy wasn't able to get too comfortable on the dives and evidently soul infernal are consistently on the back foot here the guangzhou charge are the best team in apac for a reason there is not a weak link on this roster and I think you look at the Soul Infernal who put more eggs in the MN3 basket with the Fix Some Mercy, which did deliver that to turn one or two fights, but not enough. We need the entirety of the Soul Infernal to give their 200% if they want to take a game or a match against the Guangzhou Charge. We're going to throw it to a break. And we'll see you on the other side.
charge. Haven't been stopped yet. Ilios, a swift 2 0. As at least you saw some different looks from the Inferno with the Mercy, with whatever. Even matching on the uh, on the Echo on Well was cool to see, but Choice A1 is just head and shoulders above. Yeah, the scrim meta definitely starting to crystallize. And I do wonder if Choice A1 was uh, a big part of that. Knowingly, uh, a huge Echo player might have been showing it off quite a bit in scrims. And hey, a couple of teams over like, whoa! He's for choice A1 on that. He's dominating. Look, we, we should we should give that one a go. And I think one of the big uh, misnomers potentially that I talked about in the last game was choice A1 versus Zest and Zest getting Omega gapped. But the thing is, that was the conflux of a huge amount of context, including the MN3 was getting the Mercy Pocket. And yes, here we go. Uh, here are our Echo stats. Obviously not amazing possessed compared to choice at one but the same could be said of the tracer where zest was continuously having to play a far more reactive style where it's trying to get on top of piggy because with the mercy pocket what you give up there with the mercy is either having a zen or a brig who can impact the tracer duel from afar and remember choice a one had so much more freedom after getting brig packs from xerneas to be able to play more aggressively whereas if zest took damage he had to dash for a health pack because no one was going to be able to peek out to try and heal him you couldn't ask mag to come and uh defense matrix that tracer it simply takes too many resources away and i'm hoping as we move over to blizzard world this just gets a little bit more support to actually take this door i think the the big tempo thing for me on well was the fact that choice one had nano first he was able to jump in get the 4k get duplicate online so when zest got nanoed then choice one just had to use duplicate to survive you never know what the zest 4k if he had that dog in him because just the ults <laughs> were ready from the charge due to just the snowball na snowbally nature of control the guangzhou charge they get forced to round three by the spark but that is a whole different team now we go to blizzard world where this is a strong map from the inferno we haven't seen the charge play this yet so no stats but happy to report that the soul infernal won this against the dallas fuel and the soul dynasty in their long game five first match so two and oh for the infernal so we'll see if that'll help them tie the series this is one of the areas where we're more likely to see an mn3 sombra come out and that might be helpful in trying to take this Mag versus Piggy duel, which thus far has been pretty much all Piggy all the time. But honestly, I, I think it's been very much more of a team difference in favor of the Guangzhou charge. Everyone simply being able to dominate on their respective roles, whether it's Choice one on the Echo or Piggy and the Diva versus Diva. I think a lot of it comes down to the sort port players of the Guangzhou charge as well. Farway and Xerneas do so much to enable aggressive plays simply by being able to... Uh, moderate those with huge amounts of healing coming out and very intelligent peaking to make sure that they don't uh, demand too much cross mm -hmm. healing between each other. I'm really curious about this Hammond. We've seen this exact look from Soul Inferno before. The only thing is whether it's going to be double flanker or a Hanzo usually from MN3. But realizing the threat of a dive from Piggy, the Coach Gun is another good solution to that. But the Mag Hammond, you don't get to see this too much. It's fallen out of the meta due to the prevalence of a Discord Orb from Zen, a Sleep from Ana, Sombra being super meta. The hacks are annoying for that. So we'll see how Mag plays his life. Yeah, Mag going to be playing a lot more uh, health pack control here. I would not mind seeing Jilly swap over to a Sombra if they run into a roadblock. Just controlling those health packs and making sure Mag has to rely on the supports for healing could be absolutely brutal. Piggy getting crossfired here. It's a beautiful setup from the Soul Inferno, which means he has to give away that space to get healed up by Farway and Xerneas. With both these comps lacking direct healing due to not having something like a Br Baptiste or an Ana. Well, the charge have forced Mag and friends back, who heal back up. And then fight their way through. Soul don't even give up a single tick despite the charge. Making good headway in terms of real estate. Dropping below Choice A1 close to the pulse bomb and piggy just gets one no click. disgusting defense from soul infernal and piggy still has baby diva managed to take out skewed though and that's troublesome because skewed is going to take a long time to float on back you can't overclock those repulses lemon and this might give an opening to guangzhou charge if they can bring up the tempo slightly that's why choice a1 is moving forward at the moment knowing he has a distinct orb advantage over zest who finally has been able to find some more even tracer doors by having that long range support that he's been begging for Feels like Guangzhou Charge are free to move towards the point, though, so I don't think Inferno or Scooter are too worried 
about losing that one member back. Skewed back on the high ground with Fixa. Charge starting to pressure that point. Jimmy harassed by Mag, who disappears into the shadows. And that's where the charge poke is starting to be threatening. You only have Zen heals if you're Infernal and the charge are floating around the point. This is the dangerous spot. But Piggy has to fall back for heals and with a Brig Zen, it's not coming any quickly. And Mag just has to reset with the team. Piggy doesn't have a mech. So two ticks will be available for charge. The Soul Infernal, their retake potential is off of the back of Zest, who will contest a little bit. But until Mag gets back, this is just not holdable from the Infernal. Zest tries to keep his toes on the point, but unfortunately those creps don't pass the check. Nice little pulse along to Skewed, but I'm sure Skewed is probably going to die there anyway. Gongjo Charge now can start the long and arduous process of moving through second with Piggy out of mech for a moment. Claiming high ground is going to be a touch more difficult, but excellent awareness there from Jimmy just to deny MN3 that additional damage, knowing that any poke they catch isn't really uh, much in their favor because they already have both support alts here on the Gongjo Charge. Yeah, Piggy got his mech back. You, you wished if you were in the Infernal, you could have take that, taken that engagement before the mech came online, but Mag was waiting for the setup from the front line of Zest and MN3. Didn't come in time. Charge. Hard smooth sailing so far as the Infernal established on the high ground. Mines right above. Charge split up. Transcendence held on by far away. Sometimes you see that as kind of a panic reaction, especially if you're caught in the middle of those mines. But Charge holding on to all their ultimates. And now you wish he had started using some as Jimmy picked off in the back. Charge only have eyes at the front of their head, though, as they're just still pushing the cart. Peggy realizing the situation he's in. He's got his support in the closet now that Mag is there, though. Piggy still hasn't turned around, and now he goes back, but you've lost two people. It's too late. Soul Infernal's calls here real clean, and that's some excellent tech from Mag as well to be able to pull off the uh, the ball engage in that tiny room with a very low ceiling. can be difficult to make work. Soul Infernal, very disciplined positioning here from the supports as well. Fixer and Skewed are going to be incredibly difficult to get any real damage onto. It all comes down to Jimmy, but Jimmy's priority number one is taking out MN3, who's getting themselves a break pocket with a shield, so taking those doors can be incredibly perilous. Choice they want drops so low, managed to live there. Transcendence and Rally Pop from the charge as they race forward to get some value out of this and especially to survive the Bob that from MN3 that was put in the closet. So not affecting the charge too much, although he's kind of shooting them in the back. Charge, going to push through this right building. But man, it's tough to get kills when you're just getting shot from every angle and the charge's focus is split in so many different ways. So charge will have to reset. I love a choice there from MN3 to try and rebuff the double support ultimate push with the Bob. Just throwing multiple members up into the air, stopping the forward momentum that can't really be re-established when you don't have the speed boosters from like a Junker Queen or from a Lucio and forcing them to be bogged down in the weeds, fighting that big Omnic and not really having the damage to take it down. Remember that Mag here with the third person camera gets a bunch of free information to allow MN3 to set up these dynamites. Oh, you saw that the, the DPS or the support, sorry, were on fire for the charge. So Mag went in to see what he could find. He's getting chased and he's got, Mag has great mobility. He's survived a lot. I'm not seeing him as the first pick of the Infernal. And they've actually taken a, quite a few fights when it comes to the defense. Mag is summoning so much attention and choice in one on the chase. Peggy has been much of an, uh, a cart anchor but finding, maybe having some trouble knowing when to peel off of that and go back towards the supports when Mag is on the dive. One minute left though from the charge and they still have to cap B. So this is a big fight for the Infernal. Big defensive fight. Transcendent still in hand. Mag discovered those are the mines and Jimmy is pushed right into them. Goodbye, sir. Mag's not even done yet. He's pushing people from the charge out of cover. Charge uncomfortable, not feeling very safe and cozy. And well, the pulse misses from choice in one, so still not feeling cozy if you're the charge. Self-destruct from Peggy, not allowed to get back into mech. With 27 seconds, you don't have a tank, and the charge are exposed. You don't even have a transcendence to just turn this fight any different way as the charge. This is not a far push from them. In 16 seconds, these staggers are brutal. Yeah, choice in one, unlikely to escape here with his life as well. 80 HP, and yes, a nicely placed double blink. Oh, he's been chased away from the cart, though. It's going to have to be someone else who touches. Mag continues to harass, and Piggy has to move everyone to the ball to touch cart. Piggy will have to anchor that rally, and Transcendence are around the corner. Somebody has to keep going. The charge are scaring the heck out of me. Transcendence is there. Charge are living. 
but they got across all the way down to the back line. The Bob is thrown in the back line of Charge, who are forced to use the rally. It's mirrored by Fixa. Their spawns are closer from the Infernal as the Charge have been pushed to the brink as they haven't dropped a map yet. And this is un unchar uncharacteristic for the Charge to not have a far push. And it ends here short of point B. Uncharacteristically quiet from Choice Air One and Jimmy. A final blow each, but Jimmy right now is one and five. Choice Air One's keeping pace on damage compared to his counterpart on the Soul Infernal, but Jimmy right now 2.5k damage compared to 6.8 from MN3. MN3, of course, has had the advantage of playing the defensive angles on the hit scan, which is a huge means to try and take the fights that you want. And Jimmy's not able to simply force the fights that he'd like. I may turn around on the defense, but for Guangzhou Charge, their map streak is in worrisome peril. I think Charge are just having a hard time facing a Hammond comp. Uh, you don't see this a lot. With a Winston, you're you're staying in the same place at least for five to six seconds until your jump is there, right? So it's an mm -hmm. easier diva matchup to just go and bully that one person. But Hammond is so much more mobile and survivable compared to a Winston or a diva that Charge don't know whether to commit to Mag to chase him around. Choice in one struggled with that decision himself, and still Mag, I, I would imagine, has very very low deaths compared to Piggy, who is constantly having to remake sometimes not even being able to and the tank gap is real for infernal you'd be absolutely right there lemon mags only died once actually has the most final blows in the lobby at seven next highest is zest with four and now mag is going to bring out his signature hero the winston here this will be very good for getting on top of those uh tightly packed supports you know that xerneas and farway are often going to be playing together in order to try and rebuff those dives nope it's going to be a full swap here it's a big prank on me as MN3 moves over back onto the Ash. But now Jimmy gets to play in the defensive positions. And Jimmy is going to exploit them. Jimothy, calm down. Inferno just figured out what they want to play. <laughs> I know I know you know what to do, but they don't. They're Go back to spawn and the, change again. They're still in the war room, but Infernal. Yeah, this Zen Brig will do a lot of damage in terms of the Discord Orb, but not a ton of healing. It's all about packing your flankers, and Mag will have to rely on those Mega Health Packs on the left side. Reliance on those Megas. Certainly going to be a, a hallmark here of Mag. Daring someone to chase him, but Guangzhou Charge seem uh, unbothered. Moisturized as Fixer in their lanes. We'll, make, we'll wait for Mag to reappear before doing any more damage to try and scare him again once more. Yeah, I like the Mag Hammond call. That was something Charge just had issues dealing with in terms of coordination. Like, Jimmy still on the Hanzo. Surprised that Charge don't want to bring out the Sombra. We brought this idea Ooh. up before. I'm at three. Okay. That was gross. Mag trying to push people off the high ground. Pops it up. Lines up the pins for MN3. Six foot tall. Stole Infernal on the point with the second tick as Charge. Piggy is so busy trying to peel for his supports, but they're all dead, and you can't even deny the cap. The Infernal are controlling this map. Five minutes to get 104 meters. And with a stagger here onto Piggy, there's so much free space to be gained. Look already at where Skewed is posting up, trying to get those right clicks in. Choice A1 needs to try and... Oh! oh. He could try and respawn, I guess. MN3's got his number. He sniffed him out, Lemon. Mmm, smells like <laughs> Tracer over here. MN3 goes to the high ground. Dominant position with Mag, who can make so much space. There's not as much pressure on MN3 as there is on Jimmy because P Piggy is playing a full peel reactionary play style. And far away, Jimmy, that poke has to deliver on the front. They have to go for executions and charge on the high ground. But for how long? Mag is up there close to mines and actually pounds Jimmy into the dirt. RIP, the gravestone there. And five to four, as Infernal have Mag healed up, Charge put all that damage into the tank, but can't kill him. Choice A1 still trying to deliver this pulse from MN3 stomied it last time. Five volts now for Guangzhou Charge. How economically can they rebuff this attack? Oh, the mines on the top bridge and on the card. The Charge facing their first map defeat in the qualifier, and the Infernal are up by one. The Bob's added to the picture. The Transcendence from far away keeps them up as Piggy flies back to the car to contest it. Three and a half minutes 
Asphyxus rally keeps infernal kicking mag still I don't think has died this round the charge realizes this piggy with the self-destruct not allowed to get back into mech Jimmy's widow unnoticed as the infernal will give the charge their first game loss the Jimmy fans are about to get real mad at me but that was an absolutely brutally statistical DPS gap right there from MN3 and Zest and Mag managed to make it all happen by just continually messing with the formation of Guangzhou Charge. They did not know how to deal with the Wrecking Ball. Do we go and chase him down? Do we allow him to simply roll around in our backline, continually forcing those pings, those peaks, and those considerations out of us? And those little, those little interruptions in the back of your mind, those break your focus, and they allow for things like MN3 getting a wild headshot on Choice one that he never saw coming. Or Jimmy looking in the wrong direction when... Eventually, a right click came through from us in Yata. Soul Infernal's calls are clean. The engagements are crisp. And they have life in this series yet. It's a tie series. The first game loss for the Guangzhou Charge. Their armor is cracked. But after this break, we'll find out who goes to match point.
MN3 flexing the guns for the ladies on the camera, feeling good for the Soul Infernal after giving the Guangzhou Charge their first game loss in the qualifiers. And this next match, if you're a fan of Jimmy, if you're a fan of Snipers, you're going to have a good time. We still have our watch party in the WDG Esports Studios, people hanging out. Although our players are you not there in person, they're there in spirit. <laughs> um, yeah, we got a sniper map coming up next, so this is going to be a banger. Oh yeah, it's going to be an absolute banger. I mean, Rialto on the cards, and we've got Jimmy and MN3 in the lobby, and MN3 is coming through with some machismo at the moment. Sol Infernal fans, they do be existing here, and they would love to see their team take down the Guangzhou Charge, who have had a uh, been carving a swap through all of APAC, and actually. With that lost map, that does mean that over the last 12 hours or so, every team that had an unbroken streak thus far in Overwatch League 2023 has lost a map. Atlanta Reign, Houston Outlaws, and Guangzhou Charge. No one's streak survived the last half day. And when it comes to this next map of Rialto, this is a strong Guangzhou Charge map. And not because it's just Jimothy, okay? The whole team is great, but I brought the stats and the facts. Rialto on attack with a minute 29 cap against the Seoul Dynasty. And then they full health them on the defense. So watch out for Jimmy on the Hanzo or the Widow. But Mag's performance on the Hammond on Blizzard World is what really threw the Guangzhou charge for a loop. 10 final blows to two deaths. Can't argue with that. But also Mag had the, the intangible impact as well. The paranoia seeded amongst the backline and the squishy players of the Guangzhou Charge who were unable to con concentrate on the doors that they really wanted to take. And honestly, they did a great job of tracking Piggy's position and making sure that Piggy could never actually respond to Mag's pile drivers. We often saw Mag pile driver in tandem with the Zesh Tracer get dives onto players like Farway and Jimmy that were not responded to in time with, de with the defense matrix. And that comes down to good information and good responses. And Soul Infernal have not played Rialto yet. Uh, they played a junker town if you think about uh, sniper maps in general and they like the double flanker but it seems in this matchup we haven't seen any sombra from mn3 yet just trying to duel as best as he can on the hanzo which of course is working out beautifully or the ash depending on the map but this will be a matchup for a lifetime how kind of shaken up or the Guangzhou charge after that. Or maybe is the pressure off now that you've lost your, your game, you don't have to keep up this flawless win streak, you know? Yeah, I don't have to be perfect anymore. I can just be a gamer, a collection of gamers even. Rialto is, uh, it, it's a map that we often see first point held even outside of 2023. It's been an incredibly defensively favored map. And of course, the bridge on second point, an absolute nightmare, no real cover from snipers that can just post up in the gallery and free fire onto an unwitting team below this is definitely a map that is very much defined by how good your defense is because you don't want to have to attack all the way through oh. oh we got a chance gongjo got a chart as well that that's nice Soul, of course, uh, home team advantage here when it comes to the crowd's love, but you can be sure that Piggy and Choi Se Wan, the resident Koreans on Guangzhou Charge, do demand significant fan base mm -hmm. inputs. MN3 and Jimmy, exactly where we want them. Widow versus Widow. An important thing to keep in mind when you're cheering on either Widows is that the offensive Widow just doesn't have that many options of positions and is quite exposed. You've pointed that this out before. MN3 posted up right at the front window and look down at the spawn room doors. So Farway and Xerneas have to be so careful on how they maneuver out of this. We've seen them get headshot before. That's the first one for MN3. Of course, we had to cut away. You just never know when a Widow's gonna do something or do nothing when you're watching what they're doing. And especially getting a headshot onto Brig despite having a shield is, is a cool one for MN3. Other difference, of course, here is going to be the flex support skewed, pushing out a bunch more healing on the Ana here as MN3 just tears apart the Guangzhou support line. Zerni is far away and Jimmy. <laughs> MN3, that's the three right there for Soul Infernal. Everyone is just babysitting MN3 and you're in his cage. Oh, he even hears this tracer. Choice A1, it'll be up to him to stop the wrath of MN3. And again, Jimmy, 
is still just trying to get into a good position. And with MN3 posted up looking at the spawn room doors, he knows exactly where Jimmy is at all times. But the presence of this tracer will make MN3 think about posting up at the back uh, arc arches, I should say. Charge are finally breaking out of their own half. A close one clip from Zest doesn't get the pick he wanted. Jimmy bought low. I don't think there was quite enough charge and a headshot there from MN3, who almost has the infrasites already. Jimmy barely even half. And it's a big rotation now from the Guangzhou charge around the back. Jimmy, oh my goodness, this is so aggressive from Mag. This might be a feed. And yeah, Mag loses it. The rally called by Zerni is to punish the Soul Infernal that went to back up their tank. As the charge now have warded off the high ground and are halfway to the point A cap. But at the back is the final boss of MN3, which will have Infrasight. But now the Tracer one has won the Tracer duel. MN3 has to be aware that he's next in the Death Note list. Guangzhou charge hits the, the pulse bomb. Skewed removed from the picture. And Soul Inferno just can't afford to get staggered more. They may have a chance to retake, but it'll be up to Mag to make that call. Uh, choice here one, reading the Death Note book, but the chapters are out of order. Decided to go for someone else first. Piggy keeping everyone at bay. The cart will roll in, but Mag has put his body between this car and success as the rally now ready to go for Fixer. Oh, and MN3 gets a pick on the far way. You don't have the transcendence. Mag self-destruct will get that second life up above, though. As Piggy self-destruct on the other side, gets MN3 down to 47 HP. I'm feeling you crowd with that. Oh, I thought he was going to die, too. In for sight from Jimmy. That's exactly where this sauna is. With the Matrix from Mag in his way. Jimmy has to go above and beyond. MN3... Just jumps right on time! Jimmy gets the last laugh! The offense still grows! The transcendence keeps them anchored! Piggy stunned up from the rally of Fixa. Nano from Skewed invested to Inferno, losing their grip on this cart as the charge just have more sustain with Xerneas at the front, popping the rally, and Choicey One popping off. And this is all that she will write on the point A for Guangzhou charge. MN3 likely to be hunted down here piggy does not want mn3 to get away but is cautious not to repeat the same mistake that mag made that actually broke the first point defense from soul infernal a slight over chase onto that widow absolutely fateful i know soul infernal's hashtag is like demon mode but piggy the way he laughs when he kills people it scares me <laughs> <laughs> on the inside <laughs> he has too much fun beating down teams and he did the same thing when he was going up against Bellos Rhea. That was a fun trash talk. He's kind of this new blood on the roster that invigorates them with energy. Besides Jimmy, he'll he'll come back as a zombie. But for now, MN3 putting up a real challenge in the sniper duel. Charge. Still trying to get position on the cart. And it's up to Choicey One and Zest to make a difference. And Choicey One hits another pulse. Two. Or Zest still trying to get his first one. Charge. Get continue pushing oh, wait that's my venom mine zest figures out he's gonna have to try and contest cart here jimmy if he managed to hit that shot would have been even more but already taken out skewed my work here is done turns to leave tuxedo mask style as mn3 takes a shallow angle just hoping for safety and an opportunity <laughs> airborne battles mn3 i feel like it's winning the the, the Widow battle against Jimmy, but Choice One is winning the Tracer battle against Zest. So we'll see how the cards fall as Charge meters away from capping B, but have lost that momentum push. They still fight for the high ground. Mag and friends on the other side. Zest ready to blink into the window. Pulse behind. Misses. He had to panic throw that. There were so many members. MN3 picks up far away. Again, no transcendence for the Charge. If they want to brawl through this fight with their resources, as MN3 waits for Jimmy. The body shot won't be enough. The spidey senses were indeed tingling there for MN3. As Jimmy, look at Mag consistently pinging the location of Jimmy. That information is so important for setting MN3 up for success. And the Infrasight is ready to go. But likely is waiting for Jimmy to pop his so they can try and make sure that the push of Guangzhou Charge will be stymied and stalled for a couple more seconds. Especially as the clock begins to run low. 38 seconds remain here for Guangzhou Lemon. The rally begins, charge break through the stairs, Inferno tumbling down, but they fight back with a nano up to Zest. Who's in the back line? So much Matrix and now stuns from Xerneas. The rally puts fear in the, the eyes of Zest as he's headshot by Faraway who gets his revenge. 
Yes, I want to headshot people too. Transcendence finally comes out, and the charge had 15 seconds to cap as MN3 grapples away from Choice in One Pull Sticks. MN3 gone. But the charge, where are they when it comes to this cart? They need to get this cap. Time is running out. The kills are in their favor, so I am not worried about this offense. Soul will have to think about point C. Choice at one is putting an absolute clinic on with this tracer. MN3 is coming on the sojourn of all things, and Skewed's been discovered crouching in the back. He was trying to hide in the trees, Lemon, but now we're going to hide in the temporal morass of a pause. And this gives me a moment to have a look at some stats here. MN3 is six final blows for four deaths, but guess what? Choice at one, yet to die. Seven to zero. Absolutely wow. tearing up the lobby on the tracer. How's the widow duel though between Jimmy and MN3? Jimmy's got two final blows and five deaths, so uh, not great, Lemon. Not great. Piggy's Although... just having some tech issues, so no more murder smile from him. <laughs> <laughs> He'll have to wait a few <laughs> seconds. The only murder smile was for was for his graphics card. Admittedly, though, one of Jimmy's deaths did indirectly give Guangzhou point A for a mags overextension, getting a bit too eager on what we could uh, maybe copium call a Jimmy Bates if you happen to be a huge Guangzhou child. He's child playing fan. like a Hammond. He's yeah. playing like a Hammond on a D.Va, so it's like, eh. You'd well, have more, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad about the Hammond. It's un uncommon on Rialto. It's so narrow. One of the things that's really interesting here as well is that Farway's actually pumping out a huge amount of heals on the Zenyatta as we head back into map. Currently at 8k healing per 10, compared to Skewt, who's only 9k healing per 10 on Ana. The efficiency of the Harmony Orb from Farway is actually allowing him to generate transcendences incredibly quickly uh, on par with a nano generation and keep people up. So great job here from Farway Ooh. when it comes to that orb management. MN3 is on the Sombra. I love this from Infernal. I thought they were one of the best double flanker teams when it comes to the eastern region going back to their tried and true seeing if they can put pressure onto jimmy who's now on the hanzo which is just a uh, better mobility better dueling against a tracer because widow you have to charge up your shot it's it's tough you don't have time to do that against a tracer duel but charge head towards the end of the barrel when it comes to point c with 34 seconds jimmy with sonic is looking for any headshots Vixa keeps the shield up. Infernal keep the defense up. Nano from Skewed available. Zeth throws the pulse. Sacrifices his life. Choice one gets nothing either. It's a five versus four for the charge. As the rally can heal through the anti that Skewed plays. Who gives the nano to mag. As the charge are running out of gas. And two meters away. No supports to help Piggy through this. And there's no reset available. That'll be the end of the charge's push. Soul Infernal may stand to regret what they did though, Lemon. They gave away so much free space and free car push to win fights, but I think they had a slight advantage in there. Yes, they lost Zest a little bit early from an overplay into Jimmy's hands, but Jimmy in turn actually overextended to try and kill Skewed, which meant that he was an easy bully for Fixer. That Hanzo has no escape options once he gets into the middle of the Soul Infernal. And here's a quick look at one of our replays. This one's Choice Air 1, of course. Actually hitting two sticks onto the Widow. That one on the Wii Grippers. A sticky on the toes and now hitting two of these uh, stickies. Choice Air 1 is going for the hard sticks, by the way. He's been sticking the Anna and the Widow. Yeah, I think that's that's quite easy for him when it comes to the Widow, as long as you just read the grapple well. I feel like Choice Air 1 is still gapping Zest when it comes to at least Pulse Bomb. Uh, stick usage or efficiency in that regard which has been huge for charges push potential the jimmy mn3 battle was was pretty heavily in favor of mn3 it took a lot of time away from the charge getting those first second and third pick mn3k at the end but then point b was a little bit more even with mn3 still getting ahead and that's how charge lost a lot of time but infernal swapped to a comp that was better in the neutral way able to put a stop put the brakes on the train before charge capped as again, the defensive Widow always has better, more space, more options of position. So, MN3 looked better on that front. We'll see how Jimmy looks now. Real thing we need to see step up here for Soul Infernal is Zest's ultimate usage. Yet to attach a pulse bomb to a tank. Oh, no. Jimmy suspected it. And yet, Farway was the victim of it. Have a look at that. 
away Soul Infernal Widow skin, by the way. That is absolutely beautiful. I want, I want to yeah. pick me up one of those. Far away is like, I'm done getting headshot by Zen all the time and just being a Discord bot. Like, <laughs> I want to <laughs> I wanna frag too. I like the Ana pick, the Nano win condition for Piggy. Also, you just have more sustain having the Ana pick here. Yeah, you don't have as much damage for the Discord orb, but they maybe Charge are just aiming for the long battles, especially asleep against the Hammond is going to be critical as the Inferno bring that out after giving it to charge on Blizzard World. That was an issue for them to deal with. Pile drive, with no follow-up from the Inferno. Really just trying to make charge uncomfortable. Maybe force them off the high ground if you're lucky. But yeah, Mag is okay. Great mechanics here from Mag. I, I wouldn't mind seeing Jimmy move over to the Sombra if it starts to become an issue because honestly, the answering of the Wrecking Ball was weak in the last fight. MN3 under siege. Mag plays his life so well as a Hammond. He's not a feeding one. I know there's a lot of feeding Hammonds in our games and on different teams, <laughs> but you, you pointed out how low his deaths were on Blizzard World, like two or three, which is insane to me. Infernal, though, under fire pulls right at the legs. And somehow MN3 gets away. Zest gets his revenge. Jimmy removed. And he's having a bigger impact this round already as the Infernal have their time bank almost in half, but halfway to point A. That's his first ultimate kill, not a stick, but hey, kills a kill. As Mag, oh, still not slept, but always been unable to connect onto Mag right here. Excellent text to try and mitigate this and now trying to bully Jimmy the second he comes out of spawn. Tracking that Widow is so important. A couple more meters for the Infernal. Those mines are gonna be huge once Mag gets those online. Charge of want to rally early. Anti throne not connecting. Skew transcendence force scared by the flank of charge who respect it. Who go to anchor the court to deny the point cap in for sight from the infernal. But MN3 knows now where Jimmy is. But the bigger issue is who's at the front. But Zest still can deliver and help MN3 out. And he still hits the headshot. So charge. Up the fall back and infernal cap a that was choice they want only death this map by the way what a shot from mm3 going crazy on the widow this entire time and jimmy has some catching up to do right now still only three final blows and seven deaths as again and again mag is tripping these venom mines to give that continuous sense of dread and peril for these squishy backline members That's so much information it's good intel from Charge is now holding the top high ground. Choicey one, a lot more decisive on chasing Mag down. Even if you're not killing him, forcing Mag to rotate around for health packs does remove him from the picture, which gives a chance for Piggy to maybe be more aggressive. But again, Piggy, like just in Blizzard World, was that reactive, peeling, anchor-style diva that makes it so impossible to push the cart unless you remove him by force. And Piggy is doing just that. They, uh, Infernal can't get around this corner unless they push the high ground or kill Piggy. And Zest and Choice one are busy dealing with not each other, but everyone else. MN3 makes the crossing. However, a well-placed shield from Xerneas keeps the bullet at bay for the moment. Piggy, remember, has the reset here in the fae. Ooh! <laughs> okay. The alley -oop. Okay, damn. <laughs> Charge. Not even done yet. <laughs> well, Zest gets his revenge. It's four to four. But only one healer for the charge as this defense will might have to fall back. Self-destruct from Piggy? No, he doesn't want to use it. There'll be a full reset from the charge, hoping to have a retake potential for the end of point B. As the Infernal aren't going to come out unscathed from this battle, only losing Fixa, but only if Zen heals is going to be tough. Skew's going to have to make a decision about this transcendence. MN3 already moving over to the Sombra Gnome, but it's going to be good for the last point with access to these Megas. It's great for allowing Mag that additional survivability. Jimmy on the other side wants the Hanzo instead. And yes, the cart has been intercepted here by the Guangzhou charge. So MN3 has got to find a new setup, a new angle, and a new way to distract Farway before this Nano can be brought to bear. I like the Sombra pick from MN3. Now the Nano from Piggy. This is a bully at the front, and Mag is nowhere to be found to deal with this. The Mize is what stands in Piggy's way. So definitely use the self-destruct as a second life. So much survivability for the charge front line. Double pulse bar for Zest. The three. He's feeling zesty, baby, as the Infernal lock in point B. 
Zest has now caught up to Choi Se Won in terms of a pulse bomb kill. So I said we needed more from his ultimates, and here they are. Some were confused last year when Zest was an MVP candidate. But the reality is very quickly becoming plain for those who watch his gameplay MN3 now. Able to scout for free. Able to use the EMP. Piggy swaps over to Vizaya of all things here. Yes, more front-loaded frontline damage, but even worse for trying to deal with Mag as he runs away. That'd be a good win condition off of the Graviton Dragon Strike. If you can build it in time, Inferno are one fight away from going to match point. And it's up to this EMP to break the defenses. He's been discovered. The charge knows if he's on the left, throws it out only to catch choice in one. To deny the blink, and it's still not a kill that Infernal could capitalize on. This EMP was not it. But the Infernal have more tools up their sleeve. But it's all about sustaining with the Transcendence and the Rally. Fixa and friends fight through the right side. The charge backline under fire. And Zest peeled away by Xerneas, who stuns him up. Now the fight back is real. The charge a Nano Piggy, who's at 73 charge, heading towards the back. And far away, Antis the who can't finish off the fight, but 90 seconds, they got more chances. And that nano wasn't just for survival, it was cyclical lemon. This has allowed Piggy to get very close to that Graviton Surge. And now Soul Infernal realizing an opening here. They know that Piggy wants to stay on Visaya for the Graviton Surge. They're going full brawl. They know Piggy has to stay here and try and fight against the May and the Ramatra. It's gonna be real difficult to survive here. As a Zaya, there's no way for Farway and Xerneas to really try and navigate around that wall to deliver the heals. So Piggy has to save his bubbles here and be incredibly frugal. The grab Dragon Strike is not something you can sync up on either. Piggy, you see an opportunity, you gotta throw it down. But against a May Wall, Ice Block, everything Infernal can defend against this, including the Immortality. First pick though from the charge. Zest is removed. There's nothing to peel for Mag and a quick call from Fixit to speed everyone out. Opening pick on a May is certainly no bueno, but some absolute magic coming out of Choice A1. And now we're looking at the combination potentially of the Pulse Bomb and the Dragon Strike. Actually, the Dragon Strike is coming out as well. The Graviton Surge has any number of things that we combined with it and Critically, Skewed only has Immortality Field for one of them. If the Immo Field could be forced out early from a high damage Piggy with mm -hmm. a bunch of charge from Soul Infernal or in deep, Oh, deep again! Trouble. Charge! First pick, and this is last fight for the Infernal! The charge could go up to match point if they could keep this up. Five to four, and they have respawn advantage. Grab Dragon Strike could be linking up, and the Infernal are a rush comp. They want to play together. Piggy throws a grab in the middle. It's a pain sandwich. Skewed with the Ant Matrix. The May Wolf from Zest. They defend well, and Piggy is nanoed and wasn't able to pierce through. Three ultimates from the charge. One kill through this fight. The Infernal are back, but maybe... Have to be careful. The two main anti from far away did get Infernal low. Important cooldowns used. The Blizzard, the Annihilation, the Charge with the Transcendence. It's overtime. It's the fight that never ends. It's up to Mag to live for as long as he can to cycle this block against the bubbles of Piggy. Infernal with the barrier. It's too late. It's only three. And Charge have more members alive. The Infernal fought tooth and nail for this but 100 HP Piggy is too much to handle. He's on fire, and so are the Charge, who will go to match point. A brutal reality that Fixer simply could not get the sound barrier in time. A second earlier, and Mag lives. <laughs> Beats down the Guangzhou Charge. It is Zerdy. It's just crying out, we did it! We and did Piggy. it! He just primal raged live on camera. That guy's <laughs> hilarious. I love it. If you're a Soul Infernal fan, though, you are most certainly not loving it. Early picks onto both Zest and MN3, manufactured by the Guangzhou Charge supports. That opening pick, Diff and Piggy, simply do be living with the help of Farway. There was no way to cut off that support healing. Mm -hmm. The Maywalls were not well placed, unfortunately. They were mostly used defensively to try and make sure the grab couldn't be followed up upon. Guangzhou Charge certainly had worries when three of their ults didn't amount into anything, yeah. but the answer for the Also, the MN3, the MN3 Sombra EMP, that was their big win condition. And it was to just get choice of one, and you couldn't even do that. 
Soul Infernal, though, is an overtime push that didn't net a dub. But after this break, we'll find out if the Guangzhou Charge will win the series. This is the match of the day, all right. It's come down to the wire. The Guangzhou Charge experiencing their first game loss and the Soul Infernal pushing them to the brink of defeat almost. But it was them that fall. They don't go demon mode quite yet. At least they got some demons in the crowd. Guangzhou Charge, though, are on match point. Is that some holographic art right there? That's sick. Like a sticker or something? I, I guess. Maybe, maybe it was colored in using some gel pens or something? Look at that. 
That's mad. Well, hopefully that sign will stay for one map longer. I'm hoping for a map five banger. But it all comes down to push lemon. And this means that we're going to have to see Guangzhou charge match the tempo of Soul Infernal. Maybe Mag here could potentially play a little bit more of the Wrecking Ball, but I'd be more likely to see a touch of the Winston, which is uh, historically Mag's signature hero. But hey, his signature hero will become, become whatever he gets the most wins on. So if you want to bring out more of the Wrecking Ball, which Guangzhou charge seemed to be having trouble dealing with, I ain't going to be complaining, bro. I like that Mag falls back to the Hammond, though. That seems to be causing issues for the Guangzhou charge to know how to deal with and I don't fault them because no one is playing Hammond um and apparently no one is playing for far away and choice in one right now as they're probably <laughs> at a bio break but our, our next map is going to be Ish for Roundza and we got some far away fans in the crowd welcome to South Korea push map coming up though we saw a lot of Junker Queen from our teams in the last series but we haven't seen too much Junker Queen from these two teams it's been a lot more Mag or Matra if anything yeah, we're going over to Esperanza, I believe. Uh, the Ramatra, yeah. fairly, uh, fairly popular here in the Overwatch League Pro-Am. We saw plenty of play of the Ramatra from many of our teams, including uh, the, the Los Angeles Gladiators, most uh, pointedly. Choice Day 1 has returned from the bio break far away. Uh, of course, has gone to South Korea, so he's not currently here. <laughs> <laughs> Hits the welcome sign. Uh, it's going to take a while for him to fly back, but that's okay. We put him on an, ex an express ticket, business class. Choice A1 is going to be able to really fill his boots as a tracer on push. The hypermobile gameplay style is great for tracer catching people mid-rotation and trying to force those one versus ones. And that's where Zest, who managed to heat up on Rialto, is going to have to try and take the fight to Choice A1. And the last time we saw the Soul Infernal on Ishperanza, uh, they ended up winning this against the Soul Dynasty. 100 to 9 to 49. Now, that is a huge statement when you can go above, uh, above 100 meters. And it was off the double flanker Winston dive. Um, so, you know, there's your dive camp and there's your rush camp when it comes to Ishperanza specifically. And I don't believe we've seen Ishperanza from the Guangzhou charge. You know, they kind of have a limited uh, map pool, uh, game pool, <laughs> considering they were 9 and 0 before this match. Yeah. So, not, not a lot of push. Yeah, no, no push maps is, of course, it's always the fourth map. And hey, it's the first time they've reached a fourth map. It had to happen eventually. Just uh, using a phone there to peek out from under the sign, of course. Excellent technique to hide well, one's face. Well, taking a photo. I'm like, Mom, I'm on screen. Oh, uh, it's me. Proof. It's me. Uh, I do wonder who the ghost is in this particular in this particular picture. Tired to death, but the body still reacts to owl unknown. Our translator says that says, ah, me too, <laughs> brother. Me too. All right, Guangzhou Charge on match point. Will they uh, keep up the win streak? You know, the, the game in terms of flawless maps, that's gone away. But they can still keep their number one spot as the Soul Infernal want to chase up the ladder too. They were, I believe, in third place. They still are at two and one. Hangzhou Spark are sitting in second with three and one. So a Soul Infernal comeback here would help them get to that second place at least fight for it but soul inferno are, are pretty comfortable in that third place and again this is all proceeding for the mid-season madness you heard it from the sparkle interview that some teams yeah they want that easier road but some teams aren't putting that much pressure on themselves yeah a little bit less pressure a little bit more breathing room bongjo charge we see from piggy's manic laughs and big smiles they're having fun lemon they're having a good time and i think that soul infernal as well have been uh have been matching that energy <laughs> Whoever that is, you got pipes and you should try casting. Because <laughs> I ain't got that energy left in me. But I know our two teams do. Coming out the gates is the charge on match point Esperanza to keep the win streak alive and the Soul Infernal bringing out the Hammond once again. With the MN3 Ash from Elios who popped off trying to force the game five. The mag ball. The mag ball is real. And it's been found here by Choice One. Touch of a jump scare. Oh, there's a rat back here. Oh. <laughs> Choice A1 is like, I want to chase this. Wait, I don't. Drop down to 50 HP. Played his life well. But it's up to Choice A1 to get the chase down. Again, it's not always about killing the Hammond, but scaring him away. Getting him uninvolved. And Soul Infernal 
Their bridge is taking pressure. Choice in one forced to recall back. This where Zest. If he hears the recall call, then Zest can get the chase down on Choice A1. For now, Cho Charge are losing the frontline duel. Piggy gets bullied up against the brig. And Mag is getting these beautiful pile drives onto the charge. That's a flawless first fight for Soul. Is that chasm? Mag's got the tech, man. Mag knows his way around this wrecking ball, and it's certainly showing Quanjo charge. It seems that this is their their chosen counter to bring the Zaya out against the Wrecking Ball. I guess it's all about trying to take a frontline duel, giving Choice Air One a lot more space to actually just dive into the soft underbelly that is skewed at MN3. And potentially just reacting to the dives better by bubbling whoever's the primary target of the pile drive. A pulse on the piggy, despite having maybe availability of a bubble, Zess. Reading those cooldowns well. It's about a 42 meter push, a soul head towards the forward spawns, and that's a good advantage to have. You have your poke heroes on the high ground as the charge, not even contesting forward spawns, just getting ready for the back corner fight. And remember, it does take Piggy a long time to respawn after uh, dying out here. No real mobility options available for that Zarya. MN3 going to be escorted around this way and is going to have plenty of info as to when it's safe to make a move because Mag is just giving deluges of information. Ooh, that pile drive onto Farway. I can't believe he's still alive. Xerneas is separated away from the flock. Farway can't heal him in time. Xerneas doesn't want to risk popping the rally and dying with it. So the charge are stable for now. And I think Piggy's frontline presence on the Zarya is something that can su sustain for a long time, especially with both supports aiming to nano him. As Soul Infernal have to drop back after losing some members, they're ready to they're ready to counterattack as soon as Charge get too close. Nice bubble there. Oh, bob into the midst though. That could be trouble. So remember, Piggy can farm it with well placed headshots, but it seems like no options are going to be there. Piggy's going to be overrun. Yeah, the Soul Infernal just engaged off the bob in the hallway. Charge went back towards main. And are just getting peppered down with damage. Good stuff from the Infernal. Piggy can't live out in the open with just two bubbles. So it's important to get the Discord Orb on him. As well as Mag up to. And Zest is in on this plan. Looking for the pile drive. Infernal putting the pressure on already with a 100 meter push officially at the 640 mark charge they're letting this get out of hand all right coach like their time put jimmy on sombra i've had enough of this we need jimmy on sombra we need mag to swap away from this ball because he is absolutely ruining the guangjo charge they're scared of spherical objects they've been paralyzed into inactivity their fear has made the weak complacent <laughs> oh i'm feeling pretty weak if i'm a charge fan though that 106 meters to five is looking pretty nasty but the charge they've kept it close so far i think they can pull off the marathon they got the ults but it's all about how economical you can be on push it's not about winning the first fight it's about winning the second the third the fourth until infinity and beyond as i hopefully don't get the copyright stream going but the charge they are just hunting and they're just all over the place where do Mag be? That's the question for Choice A1, but at the moment it's more than happy to grab Zest. But actually activated the forward spawn again for Soul Infernal. A beautiful little steal coming through as Mag continues to absolutely troll these players. Okay, finally we see Mag put to sleep. Choice A1 wins the they first duel against Zest. <laughs> we probably hate Zest. that guy. <laughs> I don't know. What? It's a goofy. <laughs> but Charge just stood on top of the bridge and we're looking for picks off of Jimmy which took a while, then Piggy got frustrated and threw a grab to get a tracer. So now you've lost Farway and you've lost a lot of momentum if you're the charge. Xerneas has to make a call on the rally, pops it, hides around the corner to maybe get a surprise stun onto Zest and exposes the rest of the charge. Xerneas wanted to kill. That tracer is so bad and the charge are picked apart. Going to charge, you got five kills thus far in this match. Uh, Choice Air One's got two. Jimmy got three of them. Thus far, Piggy, it's been a rough map. Two elims, four deaths, zero, zero final blows. And once more, Mag, he is, he is essentially causing an eclipse over the sun that was shining on the Guangzhou Empire at the moment. He is the moon. He is the Tsukiyomi to their Amaterasu. Okay, you're reading too many books for me, but I'm reading these plays as 
the Infernal are up by two and maybe three this fight. Mag gets slept and he's still having a huge impact. This, this is a hundred to seven and growing. We're going to game five, it feels like. With four minutes, I know there's so much time. But we haven't seen Charge with more than one fight. Piggy gets nailed as he's jumping back. You got desyncs happening for the best team in APAC. And Skewed is just headshotting people as Zen. We're in full cap territory. Skewed is farming. There's no other way to say it. Mag hasn't died yet. Skewed hasn't died yet. Fixer hasn't died yet. The Bob is out. And he's gone. Oh, Put to bed. And so will the rest of the charge if they don't keep this card contested. I think it's just choice in one. And he's gone. The Soul Infernal give the Guangzhou charge their second game loss. And with a full cap. Woo. Yikes, Lemon. Big yikes. Did you know that MN3 deadlifted the deaths of the Soul Infernal? Wait, can you do that? Of six <laughs> deaths, MN3 was five of them. Zest was one of them. Mag never died. No somber control of health packs. Only a harmony orb. Grabbing a mega. Getting a repair pack now and then. Mag never died. Somebody needs to kill this ball! It can't be allowed to happen again and again and again. Bongjo charge, sullen faces. What do I do about this ball in my backline? The answer, my friend, lies before you. Hack the kryptonite. It. The kryptonite, though, of the Guangzhou charge is a hamster. <laughs> it's a hamster. <laughs> what would win? <laughs> a nine map win streak, undefeated, destroying the Hongjo spark, or one hammy boy? <laughs> Our next map, though, is going to be Antarctic, where now. Maybe you see the, the Mag Hammond. I assume not. A lot of teams love the rush on the map. You might expect sub-level to have some Winston, maybe Hammond play. But it's game five and Soul Infernal one map away from handing not only Guangzhou Charger two map losses, but their first series loss. We'll find out what happens after this break.
Mr. Magnificent. Mr. Magnificent. He's balling, and he's found the kryptonite to the Guangzhou charge. We're going to game five. I mean, Soul Infernal, no stranger to this, no strangers to love after going to the against the Soul Dynasty in a game five. But Guangzhou charge, they've never even seen a push map. They've never even seen a game five. <laughs> they might be no strangers to love, but they certainly are strangers to Sombra. Uh, I know the counters, <laughs> and so do you. But apparently, they do not. And John Ball has been absolutely demolishing. Oh, that's so cute. I love the sleepy tiger on the Overwatch League. Look at Mag. It's all smiles here as the Soul Infernal, they are reinvigorated. Oh, yeah. The Guangzhou charge. Jimmy and Choice A1 through all the matches they played so far. Very little reliance, if not none at all, on the Sombra. It's been so much Tracer Hanzo. The only time you see Guangzhou Charge really stray away from this is on control, where Choice of One brings out the Echo. We saw that. A little bit of Mei, a little bit of Genji from him. He's the biggest flex on this team. Jimmy focuses mostly on Hanzo. So if this is not in the wheelhouse, why force it? You heard it from the Dallas Fuel, and when you force these meta heroes that you're not comfortable on, you're just going to look bad. So stick to what you know best, even if it's technically being countered. Who knows? Uh, I would still like them to force a sombra. <laughs> Do it anyway. <laughs> uh, I, 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 <laughs> that is a fantastic point. However, I still would like to see a sombra, even if it's Choice A1 playing it. Like, uh, you can leave the tracer at home, I promise. Like, it, it might hurt a little bit, but you can't allow Mag to run you over. At least Control was an absolute blasting of Infernal. Guangzhou Charger going back to their happy place. And we haven't seen a huge amount of the Wrecking Ball here. These teams need all your energy in the game five. Let us know who you're cheering on in chat as we go to Antarctic Labs first with the Dive v Dive. Different DPS, same supports. Has any damage been done to the Guangzhou Charge Mental? On control, they should be domineering. The Tracer versus Tracer. The Choice Air 1 very much in his favor last time, but there was a lot less support for Zest. Now Fix is over on the Bonita instead, which means Zest can take a far more equal duels. <gasps> oh, he's gripping on! Oh my god. MN3 lives after that. Oh, Fix anti and low charge for main anti. Skewed and far away. Putting on a show. The point is unlocked, by the way. This is more of a deathmatch. And then three headshot by Jimmy. And now he's free on this high ground and Soul Infernal head back. Another two, three man anti from far away. These Anas are deciding these fights, it feels like. The Zest starts to harass Jimmy, but Charge harass this point. You're getting the first cap here. Now Guangzhou can play from a nice defensive bastion. Choice one is getting some early pressure out here. This is a. Uh... Fairly aggressive from Mag, but should be easily healed by Scoot. And it's going to give over the Nano much sooner than Farway to a large amount more healing coming out. And this could be a huge momentum shift in favor of the Soul Infernal. Quick Nano. Scoot. Probably going to give this to Mag, but has to find the right opportunity. Pulse! Piggy gone! Now the monkey is free of Mag. Starting with the cap first, this is smart, but Choice A1 is buying time and stopping the flip from the Infernal. Now the Infernal's decisions are split. They're focused on taking the point back, getting the flip soon. Mag gets the Nano, he jumps into the back. Nano from far away to Choice A1, Xerneas with the rally to peel against the Mag Nano, who now has Primal, and he's not going anywhere, but Xerneas off, maybe off the map. No, he lives far away, can't say the same. And he's like, I thought I killed you. Finishes <laughs> off the job on Xerneas. And Soul finally get the point. No resurrections this time. Piggy playing around the outside here. And remember, every single arrow from Jimmy could be potentially deadly. A false bomb moves out, takes down Mag. And now there's no tank to hold the line for Soul. Still Guangzhou. Give a little bit of breathing room. Recollecting their forces before the push comes through. Ooh, that's a beautiful dragon strike from MN3 to cut off that main doorway. Charge will be forced to go to the high ground. Anti from far away. 
Slows down Soul, responding Jimmy Dragon Strike right through main. And Jimmy gets a headshot onto Zest. This is such a brawl. Fix a rally, slowed by the anti. Charge don't have a main tank. So it's all about these picks. A fix is stun. Has to be careful. But Inferno have a tank, like I said, so they can be more aggressive. And they can take the space. Asleep on the mag. It's okay. Charge just get to walk away. Maybe they will. An attempt to chase here from Mag, but knows that overextending was what cost Rialto a point A. Not going to make the same mistake again. Not when Soul Infernal are so close to overtaking the percentage here. And maybe overtaking in this series. And Nano Boost stands ready once again. Likely to go over onto Mag, but MN3's already potentially decided this. Ooh, that's a good jump from Mag right onto these healers. Also, nano? just the bubble placement means that Farway just can't heal anything. You're forced to nano Xerneas just so you can live through this dive. Mag gets nano so he can overstay his welcome. Emma 3 has picked off two. Mag with the others. And charge reset yet again. This is a big lead for Soul. Oh, that could be a brutal throw of a nano. I'm not going to lie. Yes, it gives Xerneas the rally and allows him to survive a little while longer, but it also keeps Guangzhou Charge investing and wasting time on a fight. But without Jimmy, they had very little business winning. The ability to chunk down Mag was going to be so difficult to find. And now Soul Inferno are going to be able to defend with three ultimates. And Guangzhou Charge, while well, they are able to match those, have to move into enemy territory, That's which is far more expensive. Game five. Round one, last fight. Mm. Zest with the first pick. Soul have first blooded so many fights, and the charge have to play from behind. They have to invest the ultimates now. Choice A1 and Peggy make this winnable, but the charge have no healers. The Xerneas rally won't even happen. The Soul Infernal have to clear this point. And Peggy still lives on for the flip, but the Infernal come back to squash him like a bug. Choice in one, the last living for the charge, has to cycle his life well. The Infernal have given up the point for now. Fixer's going to be able to quickly start addressing this. And once more, it'll begin to tick on up. Choice A1 likely going to have to put his life onto the line to make this happen. Oh, uh, Nano, uh, an anti-nade grabs nothing. And Xerneas might be forced to use the rally simply to hold this if the pressure keeps up from the Soul Infernal. It's a good disengage from the Infernal. Now they have everyone in the picture. They're going to paint the walls in blood if Charge aren't careful. But with 84 and growing for the Charge, this is last fight. The rally to puncture through Mag. Soul just needed to win the full one fight. And now they play from behind with the sustain of the Charge. Infernal respect that space. And Mag is back on the Kryptonite. It's the Hammond being summoned in the last seconds of this round one labs. Charge, vanquish through the Infernal and come back from the depths of defeat and take round one. Good God, Choice A1 still making things happen even when Gu Guangzhou Charge are in dire straits. Hitting 10k damage per 10. And if I'm mag, I'm real mad. He was giga diffing piggy in the stats. Doing more than twice as much damage per 10 on the Winston compared to Piggy, who is having to play a lot more reserved. Still, Choice A1 is the final boss. He is the unbreakable. He is the alpha. He is the omega. With the will of a neutron star spinning in place like a pulsar, refusing to lose. Choice A1's tracer is just so clean. How do you not respect the dive of the charge? Infernal not, won't even break out the Hammond off the bat. Wasn't sure that was going to work. Maybe not feeling comfortable in the grapple locations here. It's a very open map. Both teams vying for the high ground. As Mag looks to pounce on the back line. This is attention taken away by a fly being that tracer of choice A1. But still needs to set his eyes on where this Ana and Brig a far away and Xerneas is. Mag jumps to the back, but we see how the initial dive of Piggy goes, who jumps on the MN3, gets the anti-help as MN3 can't heal. Fixa is slept. This is a beautiful execution from the charge, but it's five to four. Charge take the time to heal back up. Two man anti on the skewed and Fixa as charge look to pounce and punish. And it will at least be a point cap for the charge. Oh, we're finding so much utility out of the Ana in these initial engagements. Skewed is simply not able to match thus far. Choice here one does not feel the danger of hanging out in these areas and just farming mag for ult charge, generating that pulse bomb to rip apart those squishies later on in the fights. Charge. Although they're not killing much, they just are such bullies. They're so aggressive. These antis from far away 
are huge. Mag is very low and managed to get an important grenade from far away and a pulse from Zest into the back while Piggy was receiving all the healing attention. The charge are behind again and the Infernal will get the point back. And critically, Guangzhou don't get too much off the initial cap here. Only 35% and Mag stays alive. That's going to give Fixer a bunch of healing to get up towards that rally and we'll finally be able to draw equal with Xerneas. A ballad of two nanos will be what decides our next fight. Who can get more value out of them? Thus far, Mag has been far superior on the Winston to Piggy, getting much more damage per 10, but it's been at the cost of increased uh, focus from Skewed and more nades used defensively rather than Farway, who's using a lot more antis. So we'll start with the Dragon Strike, but Piggy's already on top of MN3 and says Piggy slept, though, as Fixa looks to punish that. Piggy low, choicy one is the one who gets the Nano, and he usually pops off up until, you know, you get the attention of the entire team. And MN3 was putting on a performance on Antarctic. But so is Fixa. Important packs to the front. Piggy slept yet again and can't even pop the primal. Good coronation from Soul as they hold on a second fight. And the difference between the deaths here for Guangzhou Charge and Soul Inferno is most stark when it comes to the support. Twice as many deaths for Xerneas, 6-3 to three compared to Fixer. Twice as many for Farway, 4-2 to two compared to Skewed. This backline is surviving a lot better due to some well-maintained positioning and Piggy having to go super deep to try and pressure them at all. Soul want to force the round three. Defending would be great if they can hold on. Mag needs to fall back. Not wanting to pop his primal too early. Charge take up more real estate. Zest is the one contesting to prevent the flip from the charge. As Mag finds his way into the back line. Coordinates well with this team. And Zerni is at far away under fire. Piggy trying to respond with his own counter die with the primal. Has MN3 up against the wall. Zest waits for his moment to strike with the Pulse Bomb. Now, Piggy spots the fly, swats a butt. The Pulse gets Piggy so low. The charge takes so much damage. And the Infernal have drawn every second that they could from sub level to take, well, to force the round three. The Demon Mode has been activated. It might be reaching a fever pitch as we go to map five, stage three. Here in what we described as a giga, giga banger. And you know what? It is delivering. Guangzhou Charge left shaken. A soul infernal. They certainly are stirring right now. The demon is rising from those fiery sulfuric pits of Tartarus to try and claim a spot amongst the highest echelons of our owl teams. We're going the absolute distance. In one of the, I guess, more more famous rounds when it comes to Rush, Mag, yeah, goes back to the Reinhardt. We have usually only see Ramatra from him. Of course, those are interchangeable, but with the Lucio, with the Bap, and a Cassidy from MN3, this is really cool. Cassidy's really lagging behind, though. This is something that needs to be watched out for. Choice here, one could identify those footsteps and try and force a one versus one. Wongjo Charge now know what they're up against. And Choice One decides to try and deal with this by moving over onto the Genji of all things. Unable to deflect incoming Ooh. beams, yes, but maybe a lot better oh, to try no, and assassinate no. Skewed. Mag needs to be careful on being too aggressive with these pins. If you leave anyone out to try, Guangzhou Charge will die these isolated targets. MN3 was by himself on the mini pack, and Guangzhou Charge didn't realize that before Mag came back. Inferno just have to play stacked together. Jimmy will still pick off headshots while Mag leaves his team exposed without the shield. Inferno did cap, so they can extend this fight. Without Piggy, though, Charge will just have to rely on picks for now. Yeah, simply poking, hoping to get someone down under 50 HP, so Choice Here 1 could do a quick double dash and bring out some openings potentially for the team. MN3's only just returned to the fray and there's a wall already used. Xerneas has been charged. Oh, Mag, he can't be stopped. He's a human bulldozer. This charge, Choicey One barely gets out with his life, not even allowed to. He's pinning it to your spawn. Piggy, he gets back to heals. Far away, isn't getting the speed boost he would hope for. The Infernal are making a statement in this game five, round three. Mag refuses. Nay, not another mediocre season. I was the golden child. I was the pickup. I was supposed to be a legend. And it was denied from him on the Washington Justice, but no more.
MAG has decided that there is no more room for mediocrity, only excelling from this tank, and Piggy's going to have to bring it to him. But when it comes to close range, MAG almost has that special slam ready for him, as the Nanoblade is so far away. 72% plus Soul Infernal one fight away from giving the Guangzhou Charge their first series loss. Piggy is nanoed. Choice in one. Sinks up with them. Mag shatters. Nothing. The ghosts. They're gone. Wherever they are. Because the Ant Matrix from Skewed was enough to scare away the charge. The two old investment. Mag knocking on the doors of the charge as Piggy's primal. Is still not enough to pressure this point. This is 97%. The blizzard from Zest. Mag in the front line. Overtime into effect. The charge are nowhere to be found. The soul infernal. They rush on through. This is insane. The charge cannot find a target to dive. And what an ending to this game five. The soul infernal have done it. Given the first loss to our number one team in APAC. 29 and 2 for Mag. 12 final blows, almost 10k damage. This man is a supernova given human form who refuses to wallow in the lower echelons again. He will stand among champions, and his seeding for Soul Infernal is growing higher and higher. When the stakes begin to grow more and more, when those map files that were denied from Soul Infernal by their sister team in Soul Dynasty once again knock at the door, and they dare to once again bring up the legacy of Philadelphia Fusion, a team that would win or would go to so many map fives and lose so many of them, they refuse to carry on that legacy and stop it right here, claiming an end to Guangzhou Charge's streak. The Guangzhou Charge, I just gotta say it's... It's a compositional difference on Icebreaker. Dive is so incredibly hard to pull off. And it takes the rush to just stack together. And the only moment I found that Guangzhou could have capitalized is when Mag got a little too hasty, started pinning on different sides of the map to close in on targets, leaving some of his DPS behind, leaving isolated targets that Guangzhou could have pounced on. But Mag cooled his jets and found how to crack that Guangzhou charge egg. And you got to give it to the Soul Infernal for just having the stamina, having the confidence to go up against such a strong team, to not drop a single game before facing them. The Soul Infernal, give them their first loss. What a series. A sigh of relief from Mag. Quick covering of the camera while he catches his breath. That was everything that was promised and even more. Guangzhou Charge, unfortunately, will join the Houston Outlaws and being the team that have their streak broken, not only in terms of map, but in terms of matches as well. And for the Soul fans in our studio, it could not be more sweet as our player of the match will be Mr. Supernova, the man who refuses to be mediocre, John Ball Lemon. It's Mag. Mr. Magnificent. That's what I want to call him. The Hammond just lived on and on on blizzard world what two or three deaths you pointed out that was incredible the mind's always well placed especially on blizzard world the way he was able to divide the mines on both the high ground of point b bridge to the low ground on the cart made it so difficult for guangzhou to get any push going it was it was tough and mag the winston duel was pretty back and forth against piggy when it came to antarctic and then Mag just swapped to the better hero of Reinhardt, which made a huge difference. That was the most important call that Soul Infernal could have made, was going to rush. Because he initially floated on the Winston and went to the Reinhardt. You don't shatter anything, but it's just the fact that this comp is so much better on that map. And Mag's presence, his impact felt, and I know Jimmy felt that personally. I wonder how many people in NA are going to be waking up this morning with a shiver down their spine. What is it, honey? I think Ball is back. Somehow, Ball has returned. And Guangzhou Charge simply refused to deal with it effectively, but Mag also proved... <laughs> That's such a stupid death. Uh, <laughs> no yeah. offense to Xerneas, that, that was a very silly death. Mag proved that he wasn't just good on the Wrecking Ball as well. Thoroughly diffed Piggy on the Winston, getting 8k damage per 10 compared to about 4.5k the entirety of this control. And while it was a slow start on Ilios... For this soul infernal team once they downloaded the information they needed they were decisive and brilliant three deaths 
This entire batch? Are you yeah, serious? Yeah, that's across like three maps. Wow. <laughs> like, and not a lot of teams are playing Hammond, so I don't fault Guangzhou Charge on not knowing how to deal with that. Especially the way that Mag plays. It's so survivable, so careful. Not ever overextending or playing too aggressive. Just only showing up when it matters. And basically to kill Jimmy. And to force, to make Jimmy uncomfortable. Because he's really only played Hanzo. And maybe you expected him to swap to something else. I know you wanted the Sombra so bad. But even other hit scan, Like a, like a Sojourn even has more mobility than Hanzo. But I'm not the coach. But Guangzhou Charge fans shouldn't be too worried. Because they should still have their number one seed. Now being 3-1, and one, their map differential is still greater than Hangzhou Spark. I'll let the kind of standings update though, but the number one seed will give the charge an easier path and potentially a buy as we'll have the knockout rules released soon. But Mag, though Hammond, is something you have to fear when it comes to the Soul Infernal. And now APAC is officially impossible to do power rankings for. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's just a circle of, well, most people can beat most people, but uh, I'll tell you what, Soul Infernal are lot, not most Ooh. people. Soul Working Infernal actually just climbed to second place. Ooh. I just saw the standings update. With a plus six differential, plus eight for the charge, we have an interview ready with the man himself, Mag. He's not on the stage, but he's somewhere in the world. And we'll hear from our translator on how that's going down. Hey, Mag, how are you? Hey there. Congrats on the win. Yeah. Oh, thank you. How do you feel? Well, I mean, it's been a while since I've had a win like this, uh, so I'm feeling all right. So uh, you had a tough match today. Which uh, map was the most satisfactory for you? I think Blizzard World was the map that um, our intentions as a team uh, uh, figured, we, we kind of figured that out really well. 사, 사실 이제 물론 이제 레킹볼 조합을 블리자드 월드에서 아예 안한 건 아니지만 네네. 레킹볼 조합을 좀 주력으로 쓰는 팀은 아니었잖아요. Well, I mean, um, you did use Wrecking Ball on Blizzard World before, but you're not a team that you were like kind of known for using the Wrecking Ball comps. So what's the reason behind that? So when we looked at the Guangzhou Charge, we realized uh, that um, Jimmy was on the Guangzhou Charge, just really, really good at Hanzo. So as long, so the, 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 the thought process was, as long as we suppress uh, the Hanzo, we could win, and that's um, that's why that's why the comp was there. So I mean, uh, coming into this match, I thought uh, I believe that you would be under a lot of pressure because Guangzhou Charge was undefeated so far. Um, so. So, uh, what was the motivation uh, behind the team for coming into this match? Well, I mean, Guangzhou Charge is good as a team. Uh, they're a really, really good team, and no wonder they're undefeated. But we thought that their uh, key player was um, Jimmy, and as long as we can keep Jimmy in check, we had the confidence that we could win. So, I mean, the ma how the match went was like, uh, it looked like the Guangzhou Charge was leading and you guys were catching up by, like, by map by map. Uh, did you feel a little bit nervous? Well, I mean, a little bit, but I think uh, that our team was like, hey, we can do this, we can do this. Uh, we gave each other confidence and that's how we could uh, turn it out. Uh, who's the uh, main uh, mood maker at the team? Well, I mean, everyone uh, does their Min part, but uh, Min Sok uh, does, uh, uh, from the support line, uh, it usually kind of uh, raises morale. I mean, uh, I guess uh, due, due to the efforts of the entire team, I think that's uh, how we can overcome the difficulties. Well, I mean, you've been on both sides of the league, uh, both West and East. Um, do you think it's a little bit different? Well, I think there's a lot of differences in style. Um, for example, um, 
조금 더 느릿느릿하고 뭔가 디테일을 좀더 챙기면 맞죠? I think the East is a little bit slower paced, but has a lot more detailed um, plays, while the West has a lot faster uh, pace uh, of tempo during the matches. <laughs> well, I mean, if you compare the two, uh, which kind of suits you better? <laughs> I mean, right now I'm playing for the East, so definitely the East. Oh, that was a very PR answer. I mean, you've been around for a while, so um, I mean, how how's how's it like Soul Infernal? Well, I mean, um, Team Infernal is really good to their players, and um, I mean, I think uh, even considering my entire career, I think this is like the Soul Infernal team is like a really good team with like a good, um, a good background uh, environment and all that. So it's really fun to play in the Infernal. <laughs> I mean, what do you think is the single best uh, thing for the best part of being at Soul Infernal? Well, the food there is really good, so that's that's a plus. <laughs> so you lost weight. Uh, you lost a lot of weight, uh, but uh, if the food's good. Like you keep eating, you, you get to keep eating, right? Um, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. A message to the fans, Mac. Um, thank you so much. I uh, appreciate all the fans for um, rooting, rooting for us, and thank you. I'll definitely put up a performance that you can um, so, uh, support us for. Um, next, your next match is Han the Hanzo Spark. Do you have a message for them? Well, Guse is the best Chinese uh, Winston, but I'll I'll have I'll make sure that we have a Winston diff tomorrow next match. <laughs> well, that was spicy, and that definitely is a statement. <laughs> Well, congrats on your win, and I'll see you next match. Thank you. That's it for the translation. Back to you. Well, well, well. Thank you so much. A Winston diff. A lemon? A Winston diff. On to Gushue. That, that, that's, that's ambitious, but you know what? After seeing it today, uh, I'm, I'm, I believe in it. I mean, Sioc is skewed, of course, also known as. Excellent uh, way to rally the troops after that first map, which was an absolute blasting of the Soul Infernal. That's a huge testament to Skew's ability to keep this team on the straight and narrow and keep them believing in themselves and their capacity to win. That's a huge boon to have in a veteran player in your support line. And just knowing that um, Piggy had to get, or Mag, sorry, had to get on top of Jimmy to deny that Hanzo, and we know how important Jimmy is to the Guangzhou charge, how good they are as a team. And yeah, Guangzhou Charge keep their first place with the three and one. Their map diff, you know, from being nine and zero, oh, still pays off in the end. But the Soul Infernal overtake the Hangzhou Spark for now with that plus six differential. Spark will have an important match, as you heard in the interview against the Soul Infernal. That's gonna be a banger, and we'll have the schedule up for you in a second. Uh, it's like five a.m. here, so I'm like, I don't even know what's happening right now, let alone tomorrow. So. <laughs> 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 is, is the schedule of the room with you right now, Lemon? Soul Inferno, Hunter, Spark. Normal. Tomorrow are likely going to be be deciding second seed. Because ah. Guangzhou charge for likelihood they lose to Shanghai Dragons. Incredibly low. I'm going to I'm gonna <laughs> say that one for free. But that first match, evidently going to be a banger. And uh, I cannot wait to see Soul Inferno try and make that Winston diff that Mag has prophesied a reality. Now there's less weight on the shoulders of Guangzhou Charge to like keep up this crazy win streak. Um, so we'll see if Shanghai can take a map. Like like we kind of said, they're at the bottom of the standings right now, so it's not looking super likely with the three and ten map count that they have right now. But the Soul Infernal versus Spark. You heard the MTD call out by Mag, who has the him and the Winston in his back pocket, even a Reinhardt too. You just really were hoping to see Piggy um, have the Ramacha or some kind of rush response on Icebreaker. I think that was the big difference um, that set apart the round three game five. Yeah, some real tactical depth 
from uh, the Soul Inferno. We didn't even see that much in terms of a double flanker, which coming into this particular matchup was their most played composition with MN3 on the Sombra. But MN3 showed that, hey, uh, I've always been in a specific hit scan player and I'm still this hit scan player. But a double flank is going to be incredibly important tomorrow. Leave and Shy very much love playing their Tracer Sombra. And uh, you might have to match that pound for pound. You're not going to be able to get away with as much on the Wrecking Ball. So likely we're going to see more of the Winston. But I think Mag is more than ready for that. And Student Fixer today were looking incredibly clean. They were rarely ever getting picked out of turn. Yeah, I think when it comes to the Hammond, there is a way to counter it that doesn't involve killing it, right? We've talked about just harassing Mag out of the picture and just being more aggressive and taking advantage of that pseudo 5v4. Kind of like when the Sombra translocates out, you've got to push in when and identify that moment. But um, it, I don't think Guangzhou Charge fans should be worried. They still look just as good. It's just uh, dealing with aggress is something they'll have to adapt to. Yeah, like dealing with the kind of aggression and the lack of respect onto Jimmy. And like Mag said, coming into this, they thought that Jimmy was going to be the guy. Jimmy is Himmy. And they're like, hey, <laughs> you, you know how we deal with the guy who hits every headshot on Hanzo? I just go on a character that can't be headshot 80% of the time. Which, uh, which is not the most obvious counter, but hey, it works. All right. Well, that is the end of today. You'll look. Uh, you'll have to look forward to tomorrow. The Soul Inferno versus the Hangzhou Spark, the match of the day. And to cool you all down, get you ready for bed, is the Shanghai Dragons versus the Guangzhou Spark. Oh, uh, Guangzhou Spark. The Guangzhou Charge. <laughs> That's already great. As you can tell, it's five a.m. It's time for me to go to bed and for you to enjoy the rest of your day or for you to sleep as well. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.